felt bad for the Bengals last season. I really did. Because sometimes, even when they don't try to be, they still end up as the Bungles. 2019, they sucked, got the number one overall pick, they blew for Burrow, ended up getting Joe Burrow, thinking about, hey, after all those years of Dalton, that stuff's done, Red Rocket's in the past, and we can move on and start focusing on the future, and the future looks brighter because we might have that potential franchise guy, and it's going to change everything for Cincinnati, and you know, you get the guy, and he comes in, plays all right at least. You know, gives you at least some hope and belief that he could potentially be the guy. And then in that game against the Washington football team, has Chase Young land on his leg and he ends up being out for the rest of the season with a severe, gruesome leg injury. Like, that sucks. That really sucks and was so unfortunate. You don't like to see any player get hurt like that, especially a young player, especially a quarterback, especially a young quarterback who represents potentially so much for a franchise that needs it in such a bad, bad way. So for Bengals fans, as you went through last season, it's like once Joe Burrow went down, it's like, oh, I just want to jump off a bridge now. <laughs> and I understand. it. So now you come into 2021, and unfortunately, you have some hope and belief that Burrow could be the guy more than you have enough like empirical evidence to clearly suggest that, hey, we absolutely got this run right. He is going to be that dude and the whole trajectory of this organization changes like that. Um, time will tell how that works out. But the Bengals did do some work in the offseason to try and improve specifically on the defensive side of the ball. Um, you know, Their defense certainly had its flaws last year. This is a team, a roster in general, that needed an infusion in talent on both sides. Um, Brought in Trey Hendrickson, Mike Hilton, Chidobi Awuze, um, brought in Larry Ogunjobi. So brought in some, you know, talent on that front line. Bring in Ogunjobi to start at defensive tackle, bring in Hendrickson to be, you know, an edge rusher. Um, bring in some depth and talent in that secondary that was also needed. Um, and then on the offensive side, I guess they brought in Riley Reef, maybe thinking they could get something out of him because that offensive line obviously needed it especially with when you look at how Joe Burrow ended up getting hurt to damn begin with. Um, but on the flip side, you look at some of the moves they made, but then you also say, okay, they brought in a Trey Hendrickson, but how much different is he going to be as opposed to a Carl Lawson who you let leave via free agency? Are Hilton and Awuzie really upgrades over William Jackson? You know, like you let Gio Bernard go, A.J. Green, who was, you know, the best player of the franchise of the past decade, He's gone now um, down to Arizona, and this is a slightly different look Bengals team in 2021 for an organization that needs to show some progress this year for head coach Zach Taylor, certainly needs to show something. I know owner Mike Brown tends to be much more conservative in terms of his approach, in terms of you know how much money he spends, but also like how long he allows a coach to stay in charge. Look at all the years that Marvin Lewis got to stay there, probably even several years past when the hell he should have. You know, that said, though, you start talking about, you know, replicating the success or lack of success of the 90s Bungles era, you're not going to be long for your job even in Cincinnati if that keeps up. The Bengals absolutely have to hope that they've got some type of improvement set up for them in 2021. Joe Burrow being back and being healthy and playing a full year certainly will help the chances of that happening. Joe Mixon only played like six games last year. That was another big notable injury for this team. Getting him back in the fold and healthy should certainly be a help as well. Uh, in the draft, they brought in Jamar Chase, took him fifth overall. I know there was a lot of talk, especially amongst Bengals fans and some draft media certainly, about why would you go for the wide receiver when you could have went with the offensive tackle. And a lot of Bengals fans talking about Panay Sewell. And look, you might be looking at some of the uh, – early preseason struggles to catch the football with Jamar Chase. It's a guy that also opted out in 2020. Like, you have to play the long game here. It's going to take time. When you look at the depth and talent of that offensive line, and specifically offensive tackle class, it made sense to maybe wait until round two to address the offensive line because there was better talent relative when it comes to the wide receiver position in round one. Like, yes, the offensive line is absolutely important. But you're looking for difference makers, game breakers, and they feel like Jamar Chase can be, and time will tell whether or not he can be um, 
their new A.J. Green, where you hope Joe Burrow is a much, much better version of Andy Dalton over the course of the next decade. Also brought in Jackson Carmen, as I kind of referenced, talking about the offensive line. In the third round, brought in Joseph Asai, maybe hoping he'll be another Carl Lawson type for them. Uh, this is a team that's got a little bit of a different look this year. A little bit of momentum, I think, heading in their direction. How much remains to be seen. Uh, when you talk about the strengths of their team, you look at their offense and some of the skill, talent, pieces. Joe Mixon coming back in the fold. Like, this is a guy, 1,100-yard rusher, can catch 40, 45 balls out of the backfield. So you've got a three-down back legitimately there in the backfield. Nice for a young quarterback to have as a running mate in the backfield. Uh, the young wide receiver core certainly has potential when you talk about Tyler Boyd and T. Higgins. Now you add in a top five pick talent like a Jamar Chase. You know, I look at that and I say, this is a young receiving core that can grow and develop along with Joe Burrow, uh, but has some explosive big play elements to it as well. It's intriguing. Certainly looking forward to seeing how that plays out this year for Cincinnati. And I look at their de defense overall. I think their secondary has improved. They brought in multiple pieces. I think that it's going to help. How much is going to help, again, remains to be seen. Uh, lots of questions about this team, though. Like, I don't think it's unreasonable to say that there is a gap between Cincinnati and the other three teams in the division, but I do think that gap is narrowing. Um, offensive line, specifically their pass protection. Like all this other stuff we could talk about with this team doesn't matter if Joe Burrow can't stay healthy. And let's be clear, that is the number one goal of the program this year. You have to keep Joe Burrow healthy. You have to let him play all 17 games if possible. You've got to find out unequivocally beyond a shadow of a doubt whether or not he can be that level of dude, that type of franchise-changing quarterback. If Joe Burrow's just mid or below average, but you win nine games, if you're a Bengals fan, you're mortified by that result. If you win five or six games and you've got flaws on both sides of your roster, but Joe Burrow looks like he could be the dude, that is the much better now and especially for the future outcome for this organization. Henceforth, as a result, that offensive line is of critical importance. Cannot allow Joe Burrow to be under siege. Cannot allow Joe Burrow to take the type of hit that he did that ultimately ended his season prematurely in 2020. Um, when you talk about the defense, I look at the pass rush. You're last in the league last year with only 17 sacks, and Carl Lawson had five and a half of them, and now he's gone. You could argue, hey, you bring in a guy like Trey Hedrickson that's going to at least replace that production, if not increase it. Uh, but they still didn't bring in much to address the pass rush. So how are they going to be able to get to opposing quarterbacks? But again, I, I come back to the fact, talking about the offensive line and talking about this team, the only thing that matters in 2021 is Joe Burrow. And that's a very narrow view of things. because There's so many other factors at play. But when you look at this organization, this place and time in their history, you look at the player that they drafted, he has to be that dude. That is the only thing that matters. Wins and losses are not always the most important thing when it comes to the NFL. And in this case, you'd sacrifice some wins if it meant that Joe Burrow was that dude. But if Joe Burrow shows he can be that dude, you might play above what you're being projected to be as a team on paper this season. Because you're trying to figure out what Burrow can be. You're trying to figure out what level of quarterback he can be. And all of a sudden, if he is a higher level quarterback than he might be envisioning, it certainly changes the trajectory. And I think it you know, significantly closes the gap between the Bengals and the other three teams in this division. And I'm looking ahead to their schedule. I think the, the key kind of notable stretch you know, in that middle part of the season comes between weeks 8 to 15. Um, you've got to travel to the Jets. You host Cleveland. Travel to the Raiders host Pittsburgh, host the Chargers, host the 49ers, go to Denver. Denver. You've got a couple of potentially winnable road games there. All three of them are potentially, arguably, in theory, winnable games. And in that seven-game stretch, you've got four of those games at home, including three of them in a row. Now, granted, it's against teams like the Steelers and the Chargers, but if you want to take a step forward, those are the games that you have to be able to defend your home turf. Those are the games you've got to be able to figure out a way to win. So this could be a Bengals team. That looks a little shaky, a little so-so early in the year. But as we get to this stretch of the season, you start to figure out more of, of them. You start to look at them and say, okay, what do we got going on here? Okay, you know, could this Bengals team be a team that you look out for in 2022 and beyond? You got to keep Joe Burrow healthy because you got to get to that point in the season to really start to figure out what you've actually got. If I'm looking at this team, like I said, right now, I think the gap has closed some, but I... Look at him and I'm like, man, I don't know. Um, 
they've still got gaps, holes on both sides. When you go into a season with a young quarterback coming off of a season-ending serious leg injury like Joe Burrow and you're still questioning the offensive line, that's not a good thing. I want to be clear on that. I worry about where they're going to get their pass rush from. I worry about that young receiving talent. Yeah, that's great, but let's say Jamar Chase really struggles as a rookie. Then what? Let's say Higgins doesn't take a step forward. And all of a sudden you're talking about a team with no 1,000-yard receivers. Like, what does that look like? A lot, a lot of things here. So I think this is more of like a 5-6 to six win team. Um, you know, and last year, and to their credit, they were, what, 4-11-1, I think it was. And that was, you know, a team that at times played tough, even though they weren't very good. Um, I could certainly see this team playing above my prediction. Like, I feel confident in this team being able to find six wins on their schedule. That, that week 8-15 to 15 stretch, you know, where you've got four home games, including three in a row, got to make some hay there and win some games there. It's going to be so critical and important for the future of this organization. Um, I think they're catching up. But sometimes it takes more than one year to catch up, and there is still a bit of a gap there between them and Pittsburgh and Baltimore and Cleveland.